Hey everyone, how are you? It is a Thursday night, Thursday night episode of Nights with Ping. How are you? I see everyone in the chat. DJ is here. Show your runs late, also here. LMS says, getting ready for bed. Interview tomorrow. Please say a prayer. Been looking for a job since after Christmas. I'm going to catch the replay. Best of luck tomorrow, LMS. You're going to get that job. You're going to come back and tell us how amazing you are. And that's what's going to happen. There you go. Go get that job. These are life. How are you? The uh, celebrity Danny Mitchell in the chat, like always. Maria's here. Nancy. Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Nancy says, hi, gang. I'm sorry that I don't chat much, but it seems by the time I finish typing my thoughts or opinions, we're long past the story. Uh, so I'm, I suppose I'm a 66-year-old lurker. You can type whatever you want, whenever you want, and uh, we'll just deal with it. It's all good. Uh, Juniper, hey, Juniper, Marilyn Landis. She says, I haven't eaten mushrooms since Erin's case. We're going to talk a bit more about Erin tonight. Laurie, hey, Laurie. Mama Mia's here. DJ made it. Wooz is here. Wooz is feeling a bit better. That's good. Peekaboo Cockatiel. Moonlight View, Four Sons Mom, Marjorie, <laughs> everyone's here. The clan, Dad. Oh my God, everyone's here tonight. Hey, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, Nana Lana as well. <laughs> UK Thug Life. Yeah, the time zones are starting to get a little out of whack with the uh, whole summer thing going on. Uh, all right. Thank you. Good, good to say hello to everyone. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Erin Patterson. So apparently, hold on, I'm just checking something for a second. This coming Monday, uh, March the 25th, will be when the police hand their brief of evidence to the court. And that'll be very interesting for Erin's case. Then we're going to find out, are we going to Supreme Court trial? And I think... We definitely will be. Yes, yeah, so March 25th, 2024. That was the last time. Let me bring this up for you. Just show you the last, one of the last things we had on her. So it says, the prosecutor asked Magistrate Tim Walsh for a 20-week adjournment because there needs to be some analysis of computer equipment that was seized yesterday 20 weeks to analyze computer equipment in a triple murder where the informants yeah the informants confident he had enough evidence to charge this lady yesterday basically they were saying hey you charge this lady with like three murders and like five attempted murders but you want 20 weeks to sort out your evidence and um they're basically like uh yeah that, that'd be great and um the judge was unimpressed, but did give them the 20 weeks. That 20 weeks is coming up. Police were granted the 20-week period with their brief of evidence due to be served on March 25th. That's Monday, right before Easter long weekend. We're going to get a big update in the Aaron Patterson case. Now, you might be asking, well, Ping, why, why you have her on the title tonight? Well, the media is starting to go into a little bit of overdrive, they know that we're probably going to go to trial. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. I don't think the cops are going to turn up on Monday and be like, uh, we don't have any evidence. <laughs> we can't justify these charges. So we're just going to cancel them all. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to be able to put together enough for us to head to trial. Now, when when uh, could we head to trial? I reckon it could be quick. Could be a little later this year. Maybe September? November? But I, I have a funny feeling. Her, her uh, like, defense lawyers are going to try push for 2025. I was reading some things today that they may try push it out to 2025. We'll see who wins in that battle in the courtroom. And then we'll see what the judge wants to do, how fast they want to get it done. Hopefully, hopefully it's this year. I'm hope I'm hopeful. 
I'm hopeful. Hey, everyone, good to see you. I'm very hopeful it'll be 2024. Danny says, I'll be curious to see what the survivors say about the lunch. I think that'll be grouping testimony. Uh, how much of that we get, I don't know. Uh, that'll be another issue that we'll have to sort out. You're not going to get live reporting like you do in America. It doesn't work that way down here. They don't do live court hearings uh, like you have in the United States. The best I think we can hope for is those funny sketches you see and then a roundup of what happened during court. Now, I, I do plan to go to the Supreme Court. I don't know if they're going to let me in. <laughs> I've been emailing them on and off uh, over the last 20 weeks. And the impression I get is that maybe that if there's enough room and there's, you know, they, they might even open up a second courtroom for other people to sit in, not in the main courtroom, but like a sitting area that has a TV, maybe. We'll see. I don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. We'll find out probably on Monday. And then, um, so they're going to do that brief of evidence on Monday. And then she's back on May 3rd for the committal hearing. So I don't know how much we're going to find out on Monday, maybe a little bit. And then on May 3rd, the committal committal mention, we should find out everything. So we've got a couple of dates coming up. Monday is the handover of the brief of evidence. Then May 3rd will be the committal mention. So between then and then, what is it, about a month? Let's see. It's about five weeks. So about five weeks, we've got a gap of about a month or so. Then we'll find out exactly where we stand and uh, when we're going to go to trial. I, I, I guarantee that we're, gonna, we're going. So I don't think they're going to say no. Clandad says, yes, we have dodgy sketches in the UK too. Never look like anything like the people involved. They may as well get a five-year-old to draw them. I, I wonder if they do it on purpose. I, I wonder if they do it. They're not supposed to look 100%, um, you know, stuff like that. Nanalana says, Ping, they also had to move in Erin into protection. We're going to talk about that. You're rushing me. You're rushing me. <laughs> You're rushing me. All right. Come on. Let's talk about it. It says, twist, a, a twist in the alleged deadly mushroom lunch. As fears grow for Erin Patterson's safety behind bars. No, she's fine. Erin uh, Patterson housed in protection wing at Dame Phyllis Frost. Uh, it's a women's prison here in Melbourne. I think it's like the largest women's prison or something. Uh, it's, it's huge. Jails anyone from people done with white collar crime all the way to murderers and sex offenders women who sleep as students <laughs> that type of thing they they have a lot of people there people who do armed robbery uh, are, are often put into that particular f facility pretty sure it's a maximum security so it's not one of the little ones like in melbourne we have ones that are out in the country and they're like little farms where you could literally walk out of it if you wanted to they could just leave but they don't because if you do you basically get done with a whole heap of charges and escaping, you know, jail and stuff like that. It's it's like a trust system. Uh, so they, if you're in the Dame Phyllis Frost one, you are in the big one. It says here, Miss Patterson, who awaits trial for three counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder, is being held at Victoria's Dame Phyllis Frost Centre, a maximum security jail that can hold 600 women. It's scary that there might be 600 women in Victoria that could, you know, kill you. It says, prisoners at the jail include Black Widow serial killer Robin uh, Lindholm, Ganland matriarch and killer Judy Moran. If you don't know about the Moran family, you should look that up. Uh, violent, tiny terrorist Momena Shoma and Miss Patterson's new cellmate, school principal, you know, R-word, uh, Molka Leifer, Alifa. Yeah, she was... Uh, done for sexually assaulting girls in her school. I can show you that one for quickly. This is her roommate. Oh, apparently I read too many Guardian articles. This is her roommate. Um, she was jailed by County Court Judge Mark Gamble on Thursday for 15 years in prison. 
She is behind bars for the sexual abuse of two young high school students. This, uh, so she's got done for, you know, sexual assault. And um, I think these might be some of... Yeah, she was an ex-head mistress. And she was, you know, doing stuff to her students. So that's her new friend in jail. You cook mushrooms and you kill people and you get this lady as a as a cell friend. Uh let me let me talk more about Erin. I don't really care about this lady. Although her case is interesting. Let's go back to this one. And it says Miss Patterson has spent four months rubbing shoulders with some of Australia's most violent women after she was arrested and charged following a death cap mushroom beef Wellington lunch she served at her Leon Gatha home in July. Uh, 2023. She was arrested at her home on November 2nd and taken to Dame Phyllis Frost, where sources say she requires protection from other inmates due to her alleged crime. Someone in the prison told the Herald Sun if Erin got out of protection, the girls would hurt her. She allegedly killed three elderly people. There's a rule. You don't touch the elderly and you don't touch babies. So because of that, you go into protection. And it says here, she would be doing it very, very hard in there as she would only be able to speak to two or three girls and that's it. Yeah, her her um, communication between other prisoners would be very limited. Uh, they're probably keeping her in her cell for most of her time. As far as I know, right now, because she's hasn't been convicted and she hasn't gone through court, she does not need to work. So most prisoners in Australian jails, once you've become convicted and you're serving a sentence, you have to do something in jail, whether that is education or work, you have to do something. Now, when she is convicted, she will probably stay in protective custody for a period of time. She'll probably work from home. doing uh, They call it work from home, even though it's just work from your jail cell. Uh, she'll probably do something like make blankets for babies at the hospital or I don't know toys for kids or something like that they do a few different programs in the jail but apparently she is housed in a small self-contained unit style uh, accommodation it's she's not in a cell which is just basically a box she's in like a little unit which has a tv uh, a bed a kitchen it's, it's very self-contained. It has a bathroom, a toilet. It's almost like a little one-bedroom or like a studio flat type thing. Sometimes they can have two in the one. I don't think this is the right one. This is the other type, I think. I could be wrong, but I thought this was the cell type. This is what the uh, cell one looks like. And you sometimes have a bed friend who you either fight on the top or the bottom, who gets to sleep above. And yeah, you have uh, some facilities like TV. Uh, you can even order groceries, cook meals. Um, I don't think they have internet. Or if they do, it's very limited. Like they can only speak to their lawyer via FaceTime and things like that. And it has to be pre-approved by the prison. So uh, yeah, she, she will have more rights when she's gone through trial. Once she goes through her trial and is, you know, whatever her sentence is, is given to her, if she must serve a prison sentence, she'll have more rights after. Right now, she's sort of in a holding pattern because she hasn't gone through that. So some things are not available to her right now, although they will be later. So yeah, there we go. We all remember when this happened. And she got out of her car, she wiped away that fake tear that never existed and told the world how sorry she was that three people had died, although tried to tell us that a fourth person had died and then corrected herself that no, no, they're still alive. She, <laughs> she was very unconvincing. But, uh, you know, one of the things today that happened as well is this, and I'll show you. The Herald Sun in Victoria here to newspaper, they have come out with a podcast. And I will show you. I had a listen to the first episode before the show today. Let me show you. 
It's called The Mushroom Cook, A Lethal Lunch, A Town Torn Apart. You have to use a spooky voice for that. It's a title. Uh, It's all right. I listened to the 23-minute first episode here, episode one, The Lunch. It didn't really contain a lot of details. It was more a, 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 I guess, a setting up for episode two. It's not that in depth. It more talks about what the reporters were doing when they first heard the uh, the reports come through that that three people had died. They went out to Leon Gather and um, were stalking different family members, and then they go into a section near the end here about contempt. Now. I wanted to talk about this for a second because it is true and it does apply to anyone who is broadcasting anything, including me. It applies to me as well. It's why you won't hear me speak in definitive terms uh, in regards to Erin. Like, I won't be like, oh man, she's so guilty. She's going to fry. Like, I can't say stuff like that because she's she is deserved a certain amount of you know, protection until she goes through her, her trial, uh, and, you know, her jury trial. So we can't say things like that because it may corrupt the jury or it may corrupt the outcome of a trial. So we have to be very careful. And that's why I try and stick to whatever the media is reporting. I actually had some family members reach out last year when this was all happening and I was covering it like every day. I had some people not family members directly related to her, but sort of on the outskirts of her family. Some people that, you know, cousins of cousins and, you know, I work down the road, that type of thing, reach out to my email, but I can't use it because one, it's hearsay. Two, I can't verify it. And three, if I did put it to air, it, I may get in trouble for it because so, I, I can't say it's true and I can't tell you if it's... um real information and I could be muddying the waters of a trial so as much as I'd love to do that for you I cannot and uh, this episode actually goes into the reasons why that contempt is such a big deal in courts in Australia and why the coverage in Australia is very different than in America and America doesn't really have that they do and judges can make uh, recommendations like I don't want you reporting on X, Y, and Z. This is in America. They tend to use more uh, sealing of court records when they don't want something reported. They'll they'll seal certain things, and they'll say, "Well, we don't want that reported, so we're gonna we're gonna se- seal that for this period of time." In Australia, they don't sort. They do do that for certain uh, things, child cases, cases that involve uh, certain victims that are like, you know, might be identified or something like that. But um, yeah, people who report in Australia got to be very careful of contempt and polluting a jury. So we've got to be a bit, bit cautious. Yeah, you can't have me getting thrown in jail. Otherwise, I'll have a very weird live show. We'll be, re- we'll be reporting live from jail. Live from jail. I'll be reporting my own court case. That'll be interesting. Uh, hey, Juicy Jules, how are you? night here now my granddaughter leaving uh i i hope you don't worry too much okay let's see if we can uh talk to you guys let me see what you guys are up to yeah who says you wouldn't want to put erin patterson on one of those farms you never know what she might find and cook more mushrooms, probably. The clan dad says you won't be getting a job in the prison kitchen anytime soon. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Uh, let's see. Uh, Penguin says Yeros Germain found dead in New Jersey. I don't know who that is. Let me see. I don't know who that is. Let's look it up. I have no idea who that is. Uh, Penguin. Sorry, my friend. 
Holly. Could be someone that said, looks like Penguin but is not Penguin. That might be what's going on. Uh, Laura. Great job, Penguin. Love this channel a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Juicy Jewel says, USA. All right. Eating cashews. Yeah, eat your cashews. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to listen to the podcast, I don't know where it's going to be available in the US. Maybe on Apple, like Apple iTunes. They might have it. Uh, it is interesting. I think the legal standpoints might be the more interesting point that they can bring up. They were saying in this episode that they're unable to air certain facts now because we are in front of a court. So I don't know how interesting this will this will actually be. Although some of the background behind the scenes, information of how the newspaper does certain things might be interesting to people. But uh, the first episode was 26 minutes. And I thought it was pretty... It was okay. Maybe episode two will be better. Um, it was a little bland. Like, I think it's not anything we don't know. So if you follow true crime, you probably already heard everything they had to talk about. Although the legal discussion was interesting. I thought that the, the discussion on contempt was quite good. All right. Let me see if there's anything else in this one article about her being in prison. I don't see anything. Yeah, so it says here, it is believed Miss Patterson is being housed in a self-contained unit at Dame Phyllis Frost and has use of a bed, shower, toilet, sink, desk, and closet. As she is on remand, she is not required to work and is believed to have access to a kitchen where she can cook her own mushrooms, I mean meals. Sorry about that. Uh, also housed in jail's protection wing is Momena Shoma, the Bangladeshi Islamic State fanatic who has continued her violence behind bars. Ugh. It says Shoma jailed for a maximum 42 years for stabbing in the neck a Melbourne homestay host in 2018 attacked a female inmate with garden shears. After six years were added to her sentence in 2021, she declared, I'm proud of myself. Okay, got to be proud of something, I guess. Uh, Veronica Marie Nelson died alone. Ah, oh, that's, that's a different story. An inmate died alone after calls for help were given to prison staff and they ignored it thinking that she was being a, a, basically a pest. They, they thought that she was just like trying to take up their time and annoy them. And it was actually untrue. She was suffering from an illness and ended up dying in her prison cell overnight. And the prison actually got in a whole crap load of trouble for it because they're saying anytime someone says there's a medical emergency, you should check it out whether it is a prank or not. And that, you know, it avoids situations like what happened to her, that prisoners still deserve a level of respect and care. And uh, yeah, they got they got dragged over the coals for that one. Um, so there you go. There's your Aaron Patterson update. Uh, have a look on Monday. We might have more on, which is Tuesday if you're in America. On Tuesday, we might have a little bit of information when the police hand their brief of evidence. And then on May 3rd, May 3rd, in about five weeks after that, we should get our, we should get our big news. Are we going to trial? When is it going to happen? How long are we going to have to wait? And what charges will she ultimately face? Because it could be that they might drop a couple of them. Maybe there's uh, not enough evidence for some of the attempted murders or whatever. Maybe the, you know, who knows, things can change. Or she might have to do all of them. We'll find out on May 3rd, and then we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Who says, lovely person. Yeah, no. Garden cheers in jail. Yeah, well, they do have a prison garden. And some people work in the garden producing produce and flowers for different things. I think some of it is sold outside of the prison. Some of it is used for their meals inside of the prison. So they do have access. They, I think they even have access to knives, if I remember correctly. But they can only access them while supervised i don't know i'll have to check into that but i do know they can do stuff like that 
And Alana says, Ping, is the family allowed to attend? Yes, of course. Yes, of course, the family can be there uh, every step of the way, I'm pretty sure. They, there's no, you know, yeah, they can be there. Of course they can. They are, they're considered uh, vi victims in this and they can go if they want to. Most likely, I wouldn't expect them to be there on Monday or the one in May. But once it goes to trial, I would expect them to be at that one every day uh, as much as they can. Yeah. So we may not see them at this one or the, or the next one, but when she actually gets before a judge and jury, yes, I would expect them to be there. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. What was the other big story today? It was the Madeline Soto press conference. Everyone was very excited, super excited. And everyone's like, oh my God, it's the mom. They're going to charge her. This is the big announcement we've been waiting for. Everyone's going to be like, you know, oh my God, they finally got her. No, that's not what, that's not what happened at all. Uh, it was just a, basically a little update of nothing that's it it wasn't uh it wasn't what anyone was thinking was going to happen let's have a listen and i'll show you what today was about good afternoon thank you for joining us today and allowing us to provide an update on our investigation into madeline soto's disappearance and death Madeline was reported missing on Monday, February 26, 2024, just one day after her 13th birthday. Since then, our investigation has been relentless, fueled by the unwavering commitment to uncover the truth. During our forensic investigation, we uncovered disturbing evidence, graphic images, and videos depicting crimes being committed. It was during this examination that we learned we needed to act swiftly to remove the suspect, Stefan Stearns, from our streets. Despite the arrest, our investigation into her di disappearance remained ongoing. We understand the importance of thoroughly exploring every lead and piece of evidence. The Kissimmee Police Department, along with other law enforcement agencies in Central Florida, continue their search for Madeline for the next several days following her disappearance, and we turn to the public for help. During this time, our investigators combed through a significant number of tips, and on March 1st, we received information placing Stern's vehicle in a rural area of St. Cloud, where ultimately Madeline's body was discovered. We are all deeply saddened by the outcome of Madeline's disappearance. The Kissimmee Police Department continues to piece together the timeline leading up to the events that occurred. I want to address some questions we are receiving from the media in everyone's effort to keep the community up to date on this tragedy. At this time, Stearns is facing a total of 60 charges related to our investigation. This includes sexual battery, lewd and lascivious molestation, and unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. These charges reflect the meticulous work of our law enforcement community. By the way, uh, if this case is a trigger to you, do not go and search the documents out that she's talking about, like the charge documents. They're very graphic. They describe everything in, in great detail. And they describe exactly what acts and abuse took place. So if that's something you're sensitive to, I wouldn't go looking for those documents. They both, both in the first one and the second one, both describe it. Okay, just a warning. I know some people are sensitive to that type of thing. So, all right, a few more minutes of this. Our detectives also are working closely with the state's attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit and the medical examiner's office on the investigation. Death investigations are complex. Tasks like forensic analysis and thorough interviews are crucial and require careful attention. It is vital to address these misconceptions in the pursuit of justice while preserving the integrity to the case. During our investigation, excuse me, during an investigation such as this one, we gather additional information from individuals close to the deceased. 
each person interviewed is treated as involved until proven otherwise. This is a standard protocol to ensure all the facts are uncovered. During our investigation, we have interviewed many individuals. Each interview has been vital to our understanding of the case. We are reviewing all of the information we received and are following up on every lead. Attention to detail and the diligence are the most important aspects of this investigation. We are committed to transparency and will provide updates when possible. Madeline's story has touched the hearts of many. Rest assured, our department is diligently working on the investigation. And while we appreciate the public's interest, we must prioritize the, pub the integrity of the investigation. We appreciate your support and understanding as we gather the facts. We intend to release additional information in the future, providing more details that we do not compromise the ongoing investigation. We vow to do everything in our power to ensure Madeline's memory is honored with justice. Our detectives are dedicated to pursuing every lead, uncovering every fact, and holding those responsible accountable. Now I will open it up for any questions. Chief, I have a question. Uh, we know that you're working behind the scenes during this investigation to make sure everything is in order, but what can you tell us new today that we don't already know? Um, I don't have anything new that you don't already know other than our detectives are working tirelessly day in and day out to ensure, you know, all the facts are uncovered in this investigation. Chief Holland, is, is the mother a suspect or a person of interest in this investigation? And also with the videos that you uncovered, is there any evidence of the mother's involvement on any of these videos? So everyone that was close to Madeline is considered suspect until we have proven otherwise. See, how close are we able to know what actually happened to Madeline Soto? Well, you know, this is a very sensitive and, um, you know, it's, it's very intricate. We want to make sure that we uncover every single fact and all the evidence before, you know, we don't want to put a timeline on it, basically, you know. By the way, that wasn't a no. She didn't say no. They said, oh, you know, is Madeline Soto's mother, blah, blah, blah. And she didn't say no. She was just like, oh, yeah, everyone is a a suspect in Madeline's life. And keep an eye on that. I think there's going to be more to come. I think this is I think this case was is is a lot bigger than they than they originally thought. And it's taking a while to work through everything and get a, a, a correct timeline and what happened to this little girl throughout her whole life. You know, it may not date back just a year or two. It may date back several years. We'll find out as we go along. Because the detectives are very meticulous in what they do, and we want to be sure that everything is uncovered that possibly can. Chief, can you release any information about the manner in which Maddie died at this point? No, ma'am. We are still waiting on the medical examiner's report. Chief, do you believe Maddie was killed inside of the family's home or somewhere else? We're still uncovering all of those details. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that until we have the facts. Chief, can you tell us, tell us if Stephen Stern acted alone in all of this? We're still uncovering all the evidence. I don't want to speculate whether he was or not. Um, we will wait until the investigation you know, is completed to make that determination. As Stephen Stern said, he acts as active alone, or what has he said in interviews with you? Since we know he's in jail. He's, yes. What has he told you about other people's involvement, if any? He has invoked his right to a lawyer, so we have not spoke with him. Is there any time that you can expect an update for us? The public is asking every single day, and we understand that you're working on the investigation, but we would like to give them something. I, I don't want to rush my detectives. I think it's paramount that they take their time. And, you know, Mr. Stearns is not going anywhere. You know, he's in jail, and he's going to be there for a while. So my detectives, you know, I want them to be you know, just look at every single detail. Yeah, I think the what she's trying to convey convey is they don't want to screw this up and then when they finally get to trial, have a bunch of loose ends created by themselves where they don't get convictions for as many charges as they can. I'm confused. Is this the real penguin or the fake penguin? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Linda says the Soto news conference was a nothing burger. Still no murder charges. Don't know where the mum is. 
No mention of any info she has given the police since her partner's arrest. She is lawyered up. Yeah, I saw all the news when it broke that there was going to be a news uh, press conference at like 3 o'clock or whatever they said it was. Uh, everyone on Twitter was like, oh my god, it's the murder charges for the mom and, and for Stefan and blah blah blah. Uh, nope. That's not what it was. It was just, I don't even know what this was. To tell everyone that they're still working on it? I think, uh, what I think happened is this. The media has been bugging them. You hear it in the press conference in the questions. They're like, well, we've been contacting you and every day and you know, we've been contacted every day by people asking for more updates and, you know, why haven't you done this earlier and where are, when's our next update coming? So I think they've been pressured quite a lot and they thought, well, if we just do this press conference, maybe they'll get off our back for a week or so. But I think that's all it was. I think they were pressured into doing a press conference to give an update, but they really don't have any update. There is no update. Hmm. Clan Dad says, having become bonus dad, I like that bonus dad, to my sort of daughter, I like that too. Um, I simply have no words, incomprehensible. Yeah, I think it's a, a very sacred thing. When when you take on the responsibility for a child who is not biologically yours, I think the bar raises twice as much because you'll people will always look at you differently. They just will. And I think you as a person will always feel the need, or good people will, to do as much as you can to the highest level. Uh, and um, it's nice to see other men out there have the same mentality. It really is. Hey, Kelly. Hey, my friend. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Red Like Wine says, hey, everyone. Hey, good to see you. Hey, Red Like Wine. <laughs> Stupid autocorrect. All right, we're not going to listen to the rest of this because it's boring. Um, but yeah, they gave this press conference and this is probably the biggest quote from it. Everyone close to Madeline is considered a suspect until proven otherwise. And that's it. She did add that Soto's mother has cooperated and been interviewed by detectives. Holland said detectives are still waiting for the medical examiner's report. I think that'll be very telling. If this girl has been abused, as has claimed, uh, for you know, years or whatever, there'll be signs of that. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to get more people because you're going to have to ask, start asking questions. Her and Stefan weren't together that long. And if he wasn't the one abusing her a couple of, you know, before a few years ago, who was? And then is there more people to look at or, you know, it's, it, that girl lived a horrible life. She really did. I don't, I like, I don't have any questions as to why she wanted to go live in the forest i get it she was like home is not safe i want to go anywhere but home and the only place a, a child that age could think of is to go camping because like they don't have money they can't get a lease on some on a on an apartment so they're like oh yeah camping camping's free i could go camping forever so i think that's sort of what her mindset was kelly good to see you Oh, Kelly says, I heard Madeline's mom is in a mental health facility and has changed her appearance. Can't change those eyes. You'll always be able to recognize her. Nah, you'll be able to recognize her, even with blonde hair. But I appreciate the information. I really do. Uh, that was that. That was the big, everyone was so excited. We're going to hear about charges today. It's going to be the best update ever. No. It was just like, yeah, we're still working on it. Uh, okay. Do you guys want to do a little bit on Samantha Murphy? We have two bits for Samantha Murphy. And um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the Soto stuff. If we get anything more interesting or more poignant to the investigation, I will bring it to you. Um, so apparently this article came out earlier today on Samantha Murphy, inside the bush hideout where Patrick Oren Stephenson was arrested as desperate owners place a large sign 
in front of the home in front of the home in front in the front yard of the home it says for sale wow that is a spooky sign very very demanding i don't know obviously they want to get out of it now um i don't know maybe they don't want to be associated with a murder house or someone that like a murderer lived there uh it says here Stephenson is believed to have been living between two homes with his girlfriend, Meg Harbour. The whereabouts of Miss Murphy's body remains unknown despite his arrest on March 6. As police this week performed targeted searches in bushland close to where, close to the Stephenson compound, a large for sale sign was spotted outside the property. Probably not the best time to sell straight after someone is arrested after living in that home. You're not going to get that much. Uh, you, Yeah, I don't think you're going to get the best dollar. It says, Stephenson's arrest within the Yendon Number no. 2 Road homestead will come as another setback to its actual owner, Andrew Lawrenson. Mr. Lawrenson has been trying to sell the property for more than a year before his tenant's dra- dramatic arrest. Poor buddy. He's not going to, he's going to have a hard time selling it now. The landlord had years earlier made headlines himself after he opposed the construction of a sky barrel property on hills overlooking his property. So he he basically didn't want someone looking into his yard, I guess. All right. So that's the property. Look at this. Very remote. This is where he w- he was arrested, I'm pretty sure. It is, you know, you could see someone coming. That There's only like one road in and one road out and you got a giant hill blocking a lot of the view so apparently the i guess it was i guess the property he opposed was going to be built up here on this hill and he didn't want that because it overlooks into his property you know typical neighbor neighbor stuff this is apparently the accused girlfriend the media has been stalking her around ballarat what does it say here the homestead is up for sale for a little over one million dollars. I can't imagine you're going to get a million dollars now, unless someone that loves true crime wants to buy it. <clears throat> it says three years later, the home remains on the market with a one million plus price tag. Yeah, I can't see you getting it. But although the land is huge, look at that. It's uh nineteen point six four acres. It is a lot of a lot of land, and it's right near. Mount Buninyong, which is, this is the cell tower that her phone hit off. So you can see he was here. That's the cell tower. Very close. And here's the map. So this is where the new search area is that they've been having a look at this week. And this is where he was arrested. Not far away, just down the road. So maybe he did dump her close to home. I mean... You would think killers probably use areas that they're comfortable with. You know, they wouldn't go somewhere where they're likely to be caught. Uh, That's just a look inside the home. Uh, I did have more information. Someone sent me a a link about... Apparently, they're going to bring in the technology dogs, which they used for... Um, where is it? Let me grab it for you guys. That they used for the Aaron Patterson uh, trial or soon to be trial. They brought in these dogs that can smell uh, hard drives, micro SD cards, anything kind of technology that you would use, like cameras, mobile phones, anything like that. Apparently, these dogs can sniff it out. And in Aaron's property, they found a whole bunch of SIM cards. Uh, secure storage devices very spooky we'll have to see what that uh, that actually contained when we get to trial now let me find here yes it was my friend miss maria thanks maria she sent me this from sky news victoria police bring in technical detection dogs capable of sniffing sniffing out sim cards in search for ballarat mum samantha murphy Maybe they think her phone is still out there. It says, Victorian police revealed the new approach they will be using in a targeted search for Samantha Murphy after extensive efforts on Wednesday 
failed to find her body. Yep, their search came up empty. They were very sure they were on the right track and that they were in the right area, but came up empty-handed and called off the search at 2.30 in the afternoon. They still had six hours of daylight and just knew that they were in the wrong place. And it says here, Victoria Police on Thursday un- will undertake a targeted search using technical detection dogs in the hope of finding any signs of missing mother Samantha Murphy. Search crews were out in Buninyong Bushland Reserve near Ballarat on Wednesday, trying to locate Miss Murphy's body after being led there by fresh intelligence. That search wrapped up in the late afternoon with no immediate plans to carry out further searches on Thursday for the allegedly murdered 51-year-old Miss Murphy. And it says, But Victorian Police Chief Commissioner Shane Patton on Thursday morning told ABC Radio Melbourne search crews now had access to dogs which can sniff out SIM cards. He said Thursday's efforts will not be as extensive as Wednesday's, but police were determined to do everything they can to locate Miss Murphy's body. Maybe they think she still has her phone on her, or wherever he dumped her, he also smashed the phone and threw it in the same location. I don't know. Or maybe they just want to find her phone. Maybe they think that'll have some sort of uh, clues to it, or I don't know. Maybe they can get data from it. It says, Mr. Patton added crews will be up and around the same area, but said they will be going to a different location than Wednesday without providing specifics. He said, we will use assistance from the AFP today in technical detection dogs. Yep, they use these in Aaron Patterson's uh, raid on her property. I'll see if I can find that article. Calm down, people. We'll get to Riley. Calm down. You guys, you guys are so raucous tonight. You guys just want to talk about Riley so badly. All right. Come on, web page, load. All right. So it says, what AFP technology sniffer dogs allegedly found at the accused mushroom killer Aaron Patterson's home? We did talk about this when um, it happened, but this is what they found. Hold on. Where's the list? Yeah. Technology dog Georgia found one USB, a micro SD card, and a SIM card. And then the second dog, Alma, found a mobile phone, five iPads, a trail camera, and a secure SD card, and a smartwatch. These were not found in initial searches undertaken by officers. So were these squirreled away somewhere? Because I find that interesting that cops couldn't find five iPads, a trail camera, a mobile phone, and a and a SD card, and then another SD card, a USB, and another SIM card. I don't know. That seems a bit odd, but okay. But these are the same dogs they're using in the Samantha Murphy search. So maybe they're hoping they can find her phone or her Apple Watch. Maybe that's what they're going to try to find. I mean, that's, that's the only technology she had on her. So that's what I would have to guess is the correct assumption. There's the doggy. What is that? What kind of dog is this? A Labrador? It looks like a black labby. Let's have a look. I don't know the name of this one, unfortunately, but you can see the handler walking it around Aaron's property. Uh, Ruby says, he's such an idiot for not giving up her body location. I agree. Hey, Shelly. Hey, my friend. How are you? Uh, Shelly says, great to catch you live. Always liking and sharing. Thank you. That is very kind. (laughs) Penguin, I didn't say you couldn't post. Uh, You can post all you want. No, I I was just weird because, like, did you post this earlier? That one earlier? What What did it say? It was a name. You posted a name, and I was like, it just sounded like gibberish to me. And when I searched it in Google, nothing came up. And I was like, oh, because sometimes on YouTube, trolls will watch 
the channels and they will actually like change their name to people who are always on the channel and then like do trolling so do you understand uh so if it's you that's great i'm happy you're here yes you can post as many times as you want you can post a hundred times one time 50 times whatever you like penguin do whatever you'd like uh yeah five ipads but she has kids so maybe they're like old ipads from years ago i don't know you would think he would put that into the green like recycling <laughs> maybe they're only trained trained for androids well it says here that these were ipads so that's an apple device uh so yeah i think they can sniff out anything that probably has so, uh solder on it that's probably what they're looking for either yeah probably solder whatever makes the circuit boards that's probably what they're looking for danny says i don't think anything good is coming in the riley case no not after two weeks probably not what is this hey amy thank you for sending that to me uh, Madeline Soto on the 25th of the second 24 at her birthday party. Non-presser on YouTube. Okay, thank you, my friend. I don't know, who is this? Is this another YouTuber? Oh, yeah, this is Plunder. Guys, I, I love you. I love you all, and I love you for sending in tips and stuff, but I, I can't use Plunder's video. But um, thank you. I'll watch it after the show. Oh, posted the name of the lady that died. Lady that died. Hold on. All right, now you guys have me intrigued. Hold on, maybe I was spelling it wrong. Put it in the chat again, and I want to look it up. Like, spell that name again. What is it? Is it Jermaine? Oh, uh, yeah. Put put that name in the chat. The correct spelling. I want to look it up. Maybe I'm not typing it right. And then I'll look it up. Uh, Kelly says, We had heaps of, heaps of phones and iPads for a while. I had to chuck them eventually, but just in a cupboard, not hidden. Well, that's sort of what, what I was thinking. She has, like, two kids. Maybe they're, like they'd outdated devices from you know when they were little kids or something like that now they're in school maybe they have uh stuff from the school or whatever you know new type of stuff yeah you, we have a couple here like laptops we bought new ones and haven't thrown the old ones out because we haven't stripped them yet I, I get it they kind of accumulate uh flying dj says an elderly woman reported missing from willingboro was fatally struck and hit by a run hit hit and run driver. Ah, uh, Year, Euros Jermaine seventy five was hit by an Northport vehicle on Interstate. Thank you, DJ. I what is it? You Y V Rose. Okay, Y V in Willingboro. Ah, oh, that's awful. What an awful story. What state is this? An elderly woman reported missing, was fatally struck uh, in New Jersey. Okay. All right. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Thank you, Penguin and DJ, for clearing that up. I was like, what are you guys talking about? Well, I did, <laughs> we don't know. They made it seem like these devices were hidden. But maybe they were just in a cupboard. I don't know, but they had already they had already raided her property. Then later on, they brought in the detector dogs. So I don't know because there was a trail camera and iPads, and maybe she was guarding her secret, you know, her secret crop of deadly mushrooms, and she was using the iPads and trail cameras to keep an eye on them. So you know, nobody stumbled across it. Okay, no, that's not true. That's not a real thing. I was just joking. Uh, let me see if I can find anything else. It doesn't say, but it 
just says that they brought in the dogs to have a look for the... It did say they had searched it previously, so I don't know. We'll find out at trial whether they were actually hidden away or just in a box somewhere put away. You know, we all have that kind of old technology, either drawer or box or whatever. Maybe that's what was going on here. Although five iPads, a trail camera, two SD cards, a mobile phone, and a USB device. I mean, she has two kids. I mean, well, it could be just from that. All right. All right. I think we're done with this one. Do you guys want to talk about this one that Penguin and all it had? Oh, yes. Yes, this morning, um, the cop who killed the two, the two men, the couple, he was uh, removed from the police force today. The the commissioner used their power to strip him of his uh, badge and employment by the police. It is a power that is discretionary to the commissioner. Uh, or chief of police or whatever. So, uh, we also have something on Kelly Lane. She was caught uh, with a mobile phone a few weeks ago, which is against prison rules, and they have ruled on her on her bid for freedom. Let's see. So, if you guys don't know Kelly Lane, she had a habit of of falling pregnant and not having uh, safe sex, and having, you know, which is, that's her right, she can have sex with whoever she likes, and she can have as much as she wants with whoever, but she kept getting pregnant, and having abortions, or giving birth to the children, and giving up for adoption, that's fine too, I mean, that's your choice, that's legal in this country, fantastic, you access whatever rights you want to, Um, but this final one, baby Tegan, was never found. She went to hospital, had the baby, and then took off like an hour later and ended up at a party, but Tegan wasn't with her. And she said, oh, I gave Tegan to, you know, my lover of the time, some some guy, and police tried to track down the father, and there was no one in Australia by that name within that age range uh, that had a child named Tegan. And they basically got her for murdering her daughter, Tegan. She's been in jail for a long time. And it says here, the New South Wales State Parole Authority, the SPA, met on Friday and concluded it could not make an order for Lane's release due to the state's no body, no no parole laws. So basically, they're not going to let her go on parole because she still hasn't admitted what she did to Tegan. And she still hasn't given the police or the court the information of where she put Tegan. So they're basically telling uh, Kelly Lane, you ain't getting out of here until you give up the location of your dead uh, child, which, uh, is a intri- which is a good use of that law. So New South Wales is a nobody, no parole law state in Australia. And... This is probably one of the most high profile they've tried to use it on so far. So there you go. There's Kelly Lane. That is an interesting development, although some people did think that was going to happen. Uh, It says here, the body of the two-year-old baby has never been found. Uh, Extensive police investigations failed to locate Tegan. All the men Lane named as her father, with whom the former champion water polo player said she had a brief relationship. Yeah, she made up some name, like Peter Polly or something, and she couldn't even remember how it was spelt. Yet apparently they had a a romance for like two years, and she couldn't even know how to spell his name. It says, Lane's bid for release was a test of the nobody, no parole laws that came into effect in October 2022. Well, they worked. So if she wants to get out, She's going to have to give up the body of where she put her daughter. There you go. 
It says the authority cannot grant parole unless it is satisfied an offender has provided satisf- uh, satisfactory help. Lane was put back behind bars after reportedly breaking the conditions of her day release last month. She was returned to Silverwater after being investigated over allegations of inappropriate behavior at external work site. Lane had been working in the community on day release in recent months, but was caught using a mobile phone. Her full sentence of 18 years will expire on December 12, 2028. There you go. So she was like a star Olympian water polo player. And I don't know if she was Olympian, was she? Kelly Lane? I can't remember. It was a little before my time when she was, you know, in the sport. Let's see. Uh, no, I think she wanted to go to the Olympics. She was an Olympic hopeful. She wanted to be an Olympian, but didn't actually do it. There you go. Nobody, no parole. <laughs> Which team did she have a relationship with? All of them. No, I don't know. No, that's very rude. I shouldn't do that. Um, all right. There we go. The first test of the big no body, no parole laws, and they worked. So that's what they were designed to do. They were designed to keep killers behind bars unless they helped police try and find the body. Now, I don't think they have to have the body. I think they just have to give the knowledge. So if police can't find it, that's sort of, I mean, ideally they want to get the remains of the person. But if they're like washed away or in a river, you, maybe you'll never find them. So I think as long as you're truthful and the police think you're being truthful, I think you could, you know, that would that would satisfy the requirement. Yeah, it was. I don't think I've ever told anyone not to post in serious nature. I'm just joking. Everything is fun here. We don't. Unless you're a real serious troll, we don't, you know, we don't punish anyone. All right. All righty then. Let's do the Riley thing. Let's, let's do the Riley update. Riley strain. All right. Search update. The search update, apparently today they were dredging the dam looking for him. Basically, they called it sifting the dam. I mean, that sounds horrible. But uh, let's get her up. Okay. No. Not on, guys. It it uh it punked me. Come on. Didn't find anything there? And the un. There are the skilled. We have several watercraft uh, ones here, and a couple of them on the way that we're going to use on the river and see if we can find anything there. And the unskilled. You're like, hey, we're not doing anything. You know, more eyes, more boots on the ground. A combined effort going on since March 8th, the night 22-year-old Riley Strain went missing. It's an effort that led to these two women finding Riley's debit card after over a week of police searching. Now, Riley's family have asked David Flagg and the United Cajun Navy to join the search, but they're running into issues. That bank is treacherous. I mean, it's, it's better than a 45-degree angle. Uh, strewn with loose rock, big loose rock, uh, tremendous amount of trash and debris, um, you know, limbs that have fallen off the trees, roots everywhere. So he's warning people that have come out to help of the dangers that could lead to them putting themselves at risk instead of helping. If they are dead set on doing so, sturdy shoes, hiking shoes of some sort, um, heavy gloves, uh, rubber or nitrile gloves underneath, and that's exactly what Presley Roan and her mother are doing. We brought gloves, you know, we have, we have like one of those um, grabber things, so brought some plastic bags just in case you find anything, because you never know what might happen. To stay out of the danger, some people are putting up posters and others searching with drones, scouring the area while people like Presley search in pairs and groups. Things don't just vanish, you know, people don't just vanish. Something had to have happened and it's, I don't know. 
somewhere. Now, if you're going to head out and help look, Flag says, please contact the United Cajun Navy and do it with them safely. All right, that was the little update. The bigger one is here. Um, not a lot of news today, I don't think, but they're still searching. Uh, what day are we? Day 14, 13, 15 now? Must be getting close to two weeks because he went missing on a weekend and we're almost at the weekend. So, this is interesting. Let's have a look at this. Our, our helicopters continue to fly over the Cumberland in search of Riley Strain. Boats were on the water again today. Um, the Cheatham County Sheriff's Office is also assisting downriver. See him, please call 615-862-8600. Oh, wow. Great overview of that river. Look out, look at the banks of it. You know, everyone's wondering about the banks and how steep they are. And There you go. What is pretty murky but there is some clarity in some places but it is very very muddy you would think if there was something floating on that surface or see it right they've had so many resources out there it is very confusing but um i i did see a person saying there was, um, when Riley, if, when Riley went missing, that river was flowing quite fast and the water level was a lot higher. So I don't know if that could have played a factor in, you know, if he did end up in the water, maybe washing him downstream. Uh, this is from the United Cajun Navy. Let's have a look. Well, they got the dog. Are they getting their boat in the water? Look at the doggies. Oh, oh, oh. And folks, here are our dog teams, and somebody is obviously very excited to go to work. <laughs> Actually, they both are. They cannot wait. They want to get in that boat and get going. Uh, the dogs are like, let us work. Let us work. We want to work. We want to go on the boat. I've never seen a dog so excited to go on a boat. In a car, yeah, but not a boat. All right. The other update is from our friends at WKRN News 2. So let's watch that one quickly. The search for Missouri College student Riley Strain can continues today and includes the waters of the Cumberland River. We have a live report now from two different points of the river. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry is live on Gowers Island near Ashland City with an update on the search plans there. Yeah, absolutely. This morning, officials tell me the water temperature is 54 degrees. And as they launched their boats this morning, they started at River Bluff Park. Now, they're searching via grid, um, using a grid search on Gower Island here. We just saw TWRA with the Cheatham County Sheriff's Office on that boat as well, searching this island, checking those river banks. Officials split up this morning with TWRA in the Cheatham County Sheriff's Office, originally heading towards Nashville, turning around to grid search this island here in the Ashland Fire and Cheatham County EMA, heading towards the dam, scanning those waters along the banks as they go. At this time, officials say it's likely that if Riley did end up in the water, he would be along an embankment. So they really are checking those out as they go along here. Strain is six feet tall. He has blonde hair and blue eyes. And if you do see him or know anything about his whereabouts, you're asked to call MNPD at 615-862-8600. Live in Ashland City, Caitlin Quisenberry, News 2. Thank you, Caitlin. And this morning, crews are also searching for Riley along the Cleese's Ferry boat ramp. That ramp is located in front of the Cumberland River near Annex Avenue in West Nashville. That's where News 2's Peyton Kennedy joins us live now with more on what the search efforts are looking like in that location. Peyton. 
Exactly, Mikkel. This has been a launching pad for some of the search efforts today. And so far, I've seen one Office of Emergency Management boat and a TWRA boat as well. The United Cajun Navy is here. The director tells me they have two airboats on the way, as well as tracking dogs to pick up a scent of Riley, hopefully, and drones that they'll be using as well. I'm told that they picked this point because it's downstream from where Riley was last seen and a common point for objects to get stuck along the way. The director of operations says he believes their most successful search will be at nighttime tonight because they can shine through the murkiness of the water. Now, tomorrow does mark two weeks since Riley went missing, and the director says they will keep doing what they can until all efforts are exhausted. At this point, we're going to search until we reach a point where we say this is no longer viable. And at that time, we, we may pull resources out but you know, make sure that everybody involved is aware that the fact of the fact that if we need to come back, we're gonna come right back. Now, earlier this morning, we were in downtown Nashville along the Cumberland where Riley was last seen. I did not see a physical search happening at that time, but the Metro Nashville Police Department tells me they're going to be focusing a lot of their search today around barges where items may have gotten stuck underwater. You know, she's like, I didn't see anyone out there searching. And just just the end of this, look, there's a dude there searching. I was like, that's pretty ironic. Um, this river, look, look how it changes in width. Look where she is behind her left shoulder. And look how wide it is at that point. And then look on her right shoulder, how much it is constricted just in that part. I mean, this river system is huge in some places and i guess it's a very difficult uh search but i i found it interesting in the video they said their best chance of finding riley was actually at night where they can shine through the murkiness of the water and i was like wow i didn't never thought of it like that and that is an interesting point from that news clip i never even thought of it that night might be better for them to look through the actual water to see if there's anything down there. Clan Dad says, I'd love to be rescued by the sound of banjos and the smell of uh, boudin. Oh, I'm not sure what that is, but I know what, uh, know what banjos are. Oh, oh, yeah, I know Slap Your Mama seasoning. Yes, I do know that one. Amy007 says, complicated, interesting point indeed. Yeah, I think people underestimate how large the river is, how deep it is in some points as well, and um, just how much shoreline and how big the shoreline is. It's not like it's not like the rivers we all think about where you go down there and, well, actually, what, what was that lady, Nicola? Nicola Bully? Let's let's have a look. Where's the river? Nicola Bully River. All right. Okay. So let's look at the Nicola Bully River and then let's look at the difference. This is the river that Nicola went missing on. And she was missing for like, what was it, like two, three weeks or whatever it was. And they said, Oh yeah, we checked this river. We even had a dude come out, a specialist, best in the UK came out, checked with his special sonar and all this, and she's not here. There's no way she's here. And they found her in the reeds a couple of weeks later. And this river is much smaller. This is what, this is when someone says river to me, this is sort of what I think of, you know, very low banks. It's not, you know, kind of grassy or sandy. It's not that, you know, treacherous of terrain. And she drowned and died in this river. And this is like a tiny, tiny, it's not even that big. You could swim across it if you're a half-decent swimmer. Uh, and it doesn't flow nearly as fast as that big one, the Cumberland. Yet now we're dealing with the one that we just saw, the Cumberland. And look how massive it is. It's not even like the same thing. It's got like two different, they might have the same name, but they're not the same thing. Um, very different search zones between them. Uh, let's see. Boudin is like, oh yeah, it's sausage, right? I, I've I've heard of that. Yes, it's a like a sausage. Yeah, I have actually heard of that on uh, cooking shows. 
Uh, so there you go. I think people got to remember remember that you know they took what, what was it? Was it two weeks when she was found? Whatever it was, it was a while. There you go. There's another photo of the the different river uh, from the Cumberland to the one that Nicola was found in. I mean, they had trouble finding her in this. And then you look at that other one, and it's so much bigger. And it, it goes for a, a lot longer of a distance and goes into different places. And there you go. There's a There's a view of it. It's, you know... It's not even the same thing and it's much deeper and it flows faster too so we've got to give these searches a break and and let them do their work it's probably a lot more complicated than we understand um yeah nicola bully yep that inquest in the uk was a few months ago now it was a very sad inquest i listened to a lot of the coverage for it and uh, they basically think that her dog did something and then she walked backwards, slipped and fell into the water and couldn't get herself out. And she was swept away and drowned within a matter of moments. It was very, very sad. Very sad. <laughs> the clan dad says the diver who worked at has come out about the police ignoring him. Wow. <laughs> He was also investigated by, there's a list of professionals the police use, and it's a maintained list uh, across the UK, so in different areas. So one might be like rock climbing, one might be sonar boat or something like that. He was actually investigated by that uh, organization who maintains that list because they thought he really messed up by coming out and doing all these interviews and saying, Oh, you know, I, I put my reputation on it that she's not in here. I searched it. My boat is the best. And, you know, if she was here, we would have, we would have found her. And then she ended up being in the river. So uh, he's really angry at police because they ignored his advice and refused to look where he found. Yeah, he did screw up a little bit too. I think there's a little bit of blame to go around uh, on various things not not uh not just the police or whatever i think he also has some culpability uh because he did come out in the media and was like you know if she was there we would have found her and i know he only searched down to a certain point but still it gave people the wrong idea of how the search was going so but uh, i wish i could find that i wish i could find that investigation for it maybe i will and we'll talk about it on the late show all right that's your Riley update. There really is not much, and I don't want to be one of these channels who sits here for two hours going, let's look at this and the footage, and is there a spooky ghost in the background? Maybe the ghost did it. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's someone in a mask. Uh, I really don't want to become a channel that's like that. Um, oh, actually, there is some news. Some there, Just before I hopped on, on the air, there was some big palava going on uh, right next to the river apparently a homeless man or a homeless person so to say fell into the river and people were like oh my god it's riley but no apparently it was a uh a homeless person that fell into the river yeah i will show you hold on it says uh i'm being told the person assisting in the search for riley is in need of rescue but then I think down here they said uh, it's believed it was a homeless person fell. Uh, so they said that mentions how dangerous the terrain is. So yeah, that search terrain, it's not for the faint of heart. It is uh, quite treacherous. So there was something going on downtown. But you don't, you don't have to worry because apparently a whole bunch of emergency services, services rushed to the area. And people are like, oh, it's a big break, and it's Riley, and no, apparently someone fell. So there you go. Um, okay. Let's continue. All right. Let's have a look at this one, the one that you guys sent in. 
because I can't, I can't say I know this one. We're going to have to get off the air in about six minutes. So, uh, Yeros, or I don't know how to pronounce that, but hopefully they'll tell us in the video. Jermaine reported missing in Willingboro, dies in hit and run accident. That's very sad. Let's have a look. Trigger warning, by the way. Adrenaline from a Oh no, this is not it. It's not even related. I thought that was a video of the hit and run. It says an elderly woman reported missing from Willingboro, uh, was fatally struck in a hit and run driver, uh, was hit by a northbound vehicle on Interstate 295, according to the New Jersey State Police. 75 years old. How sad. Uh, let me see if I can find a better source for it. New York Daily News? That was like two days ago. They were reported missing on Saturday, but were found dead beside a highway, the apparent victim of a hit run. Officers were responding to the report of a hit run, and Jermaine was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said they're still investigating and did not divulge whether she'd been on the shoulder or in the travel lane. Jermaine had dementia and left her home Saturday evening, according to Patch.com. She was considered in danger when she was reported missing. They said it is with a heavy heart that we inform the community that she's been found deceased. That the police department said in a statement, we extend our deepest condolences to her friends, family and loved ones during this difficult time. We want to thank the community for their assistance and support during the search efforts. Well, that's not the way we want a uh, missing person to come up. We want them to be found alive. Probably. I think you're right. Bye, Kelly. See you, see you, my friend. See you later. I think we're about to wrap up anyway, guys. Let's see if I have anything else to the end of the show. It was a good show. Jeez, that went so quick. That went so much faster than I thought it was going to. By the way, Chad Daybell transferred to Ada County for trial. Trial on the 1st of April. That'll be very interesting. We already got one in the bag with Lori Vallow being done last year. Let's get the second one and get these get these guys in prison for the rest of their lives so neither, none of us ever have to look at them again. And then we can just talk about the kids and the family members that they took and remember them, not these two. These two deserve to never have their names spoken again. Uh, yes, the Riley Search crews uh, sift through dam amid desperate search for missing college students. So apparently they've been sifting through the dam. Uh, let me get this. Apparently they, they've they been opening and closing the dam and sifting through debris that floated to the top of the dam. That's interesting. The Cheatham Dam, dam for any signs of Riley strain. And that is where we find News 2's Kendall Ashman. I think we watched that one yesterday. I was just having a look. What else does it say? No subsequent uh, searches are planned at the dam following Wednesday's efforts. Meanwhile, WKRN reported that Strain's family, law enforcement, and the United Cajun Navy searched the Cumberland River. Yeah, they're still searching today. Today they had the dogs out there and a helicopter. That was pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about the Philly. There was another person arrested. The spotter was arrested today. A third person was arrested in the, in the death of the 21-year-old Utah man that we spoke about the other day. That'll be on the late show as well. That person's name was uh, Franco, last name Franco, if you guys remember that one. There was another person arrested of the uh, transgender person, Alex Franco. That'll be uh, on the late show as well. And more information about the Philly cops, uh, the Philly cops arrest spotter in bus stop shooting. So we got more about that Philly shooting later on. Thanks, Maria. Thanks for the emails. I appreciate it. And uh, Angela Chow in her Tesla. 
Is that the one where they were, sp they were speeding and the car flipped? I can't remember. There was a crazy hit and run in Chermside, Brisbane yesterday. There was something that happened in Brisbane. I'll have a look for it. Or if you have a link, send it to me at sundaywithping at gmail.com. By the way, I want to thank all the people that sent in uh, comments over the last two days. We've been uh, recording them. A lot of people sent in their town names, and we've, we've got heaps now, but you keep sending them. We'll keep making them. Um, there was about... I woke up, and there was like 26 comments in my, in my uh, email from people leaving town names and this and that. Thank you very much. It's so kind. I have to go back through them and uh, reply to them, but rebe has been collecting them, and we're going to do more town names. There wasn't one tonight, but there will be one for the late show. Um, we just did the old school one for Aaron Patterson tonight. But uh, and we'll have new town names over the next few days. So I think yesterday was Fort Lauderdale, right? So we're going to have heaps more from around. I've got about another 15 on me right now. And some of them are like Salt Lake City, Utah. We've got New York. I think we've got a couple in California, Texas. Got some in the middle of the US in Illinois. So if you want to see your town name, leave a comment under this video with your uh, state and town name and we'll make a thumbnail for it. And your town could be one of our thumbnails uh, in the future. Oh, there's a new mushroom thumbnail. Okay, thank you. I'll have a look. That'll be good. I just wanted to do the retro one tonight because that was when we first started following her. But yeah, it's a little old now. It needs an update. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't see any buzzing during the show, so we don't have to check the we don't have to check the uh, Ko-Fi or anything. That's okay. Um, I'll be back. Okay. Uh, someone was beeping outside. Uh, I will see you. In about an hour and a half to two hours, okay, for the late show. Come hang out for the late show. Thank you, everyone. We're still under copyright for the uh, ending video. I hope YouTube and uh, Canva lift it soon so we can keep using it. Uh, but we're working on it. I have the rights to it, so I don't know why we're under copyright, but we'll figure it out. Thanks. For, uh, it was good to see you again, Clan Dad. Thanks for being here. Nancy S, Marjorie, Red Like Wine. Good to see everyone. It was a great Thursday night show. I'll see you if you want to be on The Late Show in a couple of hours. Peace out, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.